be unchanged. <laughs> end time ethics, adamantbeliever.com forward slash end time ethics dot P D F ethics. Just in case you didn't know what the definition was. Usually treated as plural, moral principles that govern a person's behavior, those are your ethics. Your moral principles that govern your behavior, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about the conducting of an activity. So moral principles that govern the conducting of an activity. The moral correctness of specified conduct. So we will know how to behave ourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. That's scripture. So we have to, and it starts with the pastor, the leader of the church. That ethics, morality, correctiveness is taught and preached. And a standard is raised that cannot be removed. Can I preach to adamant believers today? The hardest thing I've had to do in my entire young life is stay the course. It is so hard to not back off what you're standing on. See, y'all see, y'all think it's easy. No, that's why there's not many that do it. It's very, very hard to stand up to people when they want to change the code of conduct that you are preaching and living by. People will confront you with their own ideas and ideologies. People that give big money in the church. People that gain followings in the church. They'll stand up to you and challenge you and threaten you with either taking their money away, taking some people with them, whatever the case, and you still have to stay planted. The problem we see now are, are the result of churches that wavered and didn't stay planted. They let Jezebel, which is usually the culprit, According to Revelations, they let that spirit come in and change the plan that God had given for his church. Or you got a leader who is weak, jelly-backed, squid-legged, just sorry. And his wife manipulates him and controls the church through him. All of these things make for wavering. I'm the type, if I change it because of the people, I'm not going to like it anymore. Yeah. Back when I used to have groups and record music and different things, every time we would go and perform somewhere, we would have groups and different things, choirs or whatever. My sister tell you, when we went and performed somewhere or whatever, I'm doing my song. I'm doing an original. I don't care who gets with it. And folks will pull me to the side and tell me, say, brother, these people don't know your song. You ought to sing something. No. No. I mean, why not? Because I don't want to. Because if I change and not do the song that I want to do, I'm not going to like it. At all, J. Bryan, how many pastors done called me to the office to tell me how EX ministry should be run? They all know exactly how I should be preaching. I mean, there's folks that wake up every day and think of something that I should be doing and put it online. I'm in their heart. They have a better way to do what I'm doing. So I don't move because I know what God has called me to do. Yes. Amen. I'd rather die knowing that I was doing what God told me to do than live and do what man is telling me to do. 
And why after all these years would I change anything if it's working? I think it's working. You think it's working? It's working deep. Is, you think it, I think we have. Is it what? So what? But it's the devil. The devil wants change. He wants you to back off what you said. Now, we all make mistakes and errors. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your stand. Your stand. That, I'm sorry, brother. This is not changing. So you get with it or you get gone. Because once you start, amen, once you start changing, you're wavering. You're like the waves of the sea, tossed to and fro, unpredictable. No one knows where your stand is. One minute you're with this, the next you're with that. One minute you're saying this is right, the next you're saying it's wrong. Where are the people? How are the people are supposed to decode that? So here at ABC and me as a preacher, I have to plant my feet and stand. And you're welcome to stand with me. We got a bunch of brothers in here that's standing. Can I keep going? Yeah, this is, you know, this is, this is just a tough, tough message to preach because a lot of preachers and a lot of people in this time, you know, Dr. Janine did my little test and did my emotional test or whatever, and man, it showed up massively on my test. Just the, my desire to have people fighting with me. That's, that's what I need. In the end times, I need people to fight with me. Amen? I don't need no punks. That's why I want a church full of dancing and shouting sissies. Because they, they, no, they don't fight good spiritually. Now, in the natural, they'll put something on you. You will get whooped in the natural. You will know you've been in a fight with a bobcat. And you will be scratched and bit. So I'm not talking about in the natural. I need fighting in the spirit realm. So I need real men to fight in the spirit realm. I don't need no dress wearing man. No fingernail having man. Amen. Amen. I don't need him slanging his hair like a woman. No, I need him to be a man. Stand strong. In the spirit though. So what is that? That's a man that prays, believes God, trusts God. And a man that has a stand that he won't back off of. Like I was talking about John. Just a stance where if it costs me the industry. If it costs me films and movies or whatever. I'll just stand. Because I look at it like. If God didn't want me to do it anyway, why would I want to do it? People with the greatest problems have money. Because money is not the answer to problems. Money usually creates more problems. Amen. So the amount of money you have doesn't change anything. You still have to have these ethics. Somebody needs to know where you stand. And your children need to know where you stand. Amen. I need my sons growing up in the house. I need them to know where I stand. Second Timothy 4 and 2. This is Paul teaching Timothy how to stand. He's telling him, preach the word. Look at somebody and say, preach the word. Be instant when? In season and out of season. That means when people think you should and when people think you should. Reproof, rebuke, and exhort with all what? Long suffering and doctrine. My job as a preacher is to rebuke and reprove. Correct. That's my job, to correct. Hopefully you can handle it. Amen. Correct. Folks in here, we just, we just, you just have to. Be corrected. Amen. 
Comes a time you might be you you might have to take a break from your duties Amen. and correctness Amen. to be corrected. A lot of brothers in here just hey, I need to sit myself down before I get sat down. And they take a break and take some time. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. If you need time, you need time. But rebuke it, we're proven. All of these things with long suffering and doctrine. The job of God's preacher is to preach a simple word that can equip God's people to be prepared for things to come. A simple word. That's what we get here. The word is simple, isn't it? I mean, when I shoot the videos, uh, Destination Entropy and Lords of Discord, just preaching physics and calculus and all of this quantum stuff, all of this other realm stuff, I pray for the ability to make it understandable by everyone. I had somebody, who was that? Shanita. Where's Shanita? What's up, Shanita? Shanita came to me and she told me, she said, out of all my professors in college or whatever, she said, you're the best teacher I've ever had. She told me that. She meant it, too. She said, you break down the stuff that they couldn't break down. She would have got an A in my class. Now, I might have failed it. <laughs> but yeah, but it's, 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 you have to be able to simplify the word. Being deep, that don't help anybody. That just makes you look good. That don't even make you look good when people don't understand you. Oh, brother, I mean, ooh, he preached. What did he say? I don't know. But it was awesome, the words he used. Really? <laughs> I want it to be simple in here. That's why our children are in here. The young people are in here. And they're getting the message. Amen. Y'all get the message, young people? Kelsey, you get the message? Okay, okay. All right. 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Who is this preaching? The greatest preacher of all times. Paul, he says, I, I didn't use enticing words of man's wisdom. And when Paul says that, he meant it because he could have. No one was smarter than this guy. You look at his credentials, I mean he has a resume. But he didn't use any of that. He said, but in demonstration of the spirit and of what? Power. And I prayed, I wanted that so bad. God, give me the power to preach. When I first started, I would see just all kinds of crazy miracles and different things as I, you know, with preaching, just God would just do supernatural things. But then as I kept preaching or whatever, I didn't see those manifestations happening like that. But I started seeing more long term learning and growth experiences happening. And to God, that's more important. Yeah, see, when the Holy Ghost first came, the only way to show what it was capable of was to demonstrate it. All the aspects of it. But over time, as people begin to learn the word, or they were writing the word at this particular time, now we can read it, we can take it, and have application of it in our daily walk. Yeah, there's still manifestations of the Spirit, don't get me wrong. But you got to have the daily walk. That's more important. That's the greatest demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost. Can you live right? Can you make good choices and decisions? Can you love your neighbor as yourself? Can I keep going? The preacher is called to guard the people of God, even against their own pleasures and comfort. My job is to guard you from yourself sometimes. Yeah, I know you want to go. But it's my job to come to you and say, hey, brother, you don't need to go there. Oh, come on, pastor, man. You know, we done already made the plan, brother. I'm just telling you what the Lord told me. You can do with it what you want. 
But I have to guard you from yourself sometimes. My, my question is always, did you really pray about that and see God? Because most of the time people don't. When they get ready to do something they shouldn't do. Are those your emotions? Are those your feelings? Or did you really seek God and pray about it? Warnings, rebukes, and exhortations must be present in the voice of God's chosen. Can I say that again? Warnings, rebukes, and exhortations must be present in the voice of God's chosen. You can't be up preaching without warnings, rebukes, and exhortations. Anybody that's always exhorting, but not warning and rebuking, that'll give you spiritual sugar diabetes. That man doesn't love you. He loves what you can do for him. Anybody preaching warnings without exhortations is preaching unbalanced. Everything can't be a warning. You can't scare everybody every Sunday and not encourage people. Anybody grow up in a church like that? Every revival. Everybody's going to hell. Oh, you can't live good enough. What are we supposed to do? Get on this altar and bring a tithe and an offering. So that. (laughs) But everything can't be a warning or a rebuke without the exhortation. So that all of these things need to be present in the voice of God's chosen. You notice I said chosen. A lot of people are called, but they don't do what they're supposed to do. Men that lead emotional, emotionally will not be consistent and will change with the seasons. Lord, 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 you ought to thank God you're not under an emotional leader. And none of the leaders in here are going to make a decision based on the time of the month. (laughs) We don't do that. Amen. We're going to make a decision based on the word, what is logical and what works at ABC. Ephesians 5 and 11. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Reprove them. I don't understand how some of these people call themselves leaders or preachers and they have fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness. They sing secular songs in the church. Bring secular artists and glorify them. People that promote the very thing that you're preaching against. Why would you enhance the resolve of the enemy? Are you looking for more of a challenge? We don't do that here. You're not supposed to have any fellowship. Once you start fellowshipping with unfruitful works of darkness, you lose your right to warn and rebuke. I hope y'all listening to this. This is what every pre- this is why the church is in the shape it's in now. Look at somebody say, hold the line. Hold to exhort with all long suffering does not mean tolerance. Amen. Amen. Clap for that. Doesn't mean tolerance. But rather it expresses sensitivity to the struggles of others and gives them mercy just as God gave us all mercy in our era. The standard must be upheld without compromise or else the whole body could be affected. Amen. So I got to monitor it, but I give it time because maybe, maybe, just maybe there is hope for resolution. But I'm not going to let it affect what we're doing here. We have a standard here. Don't you want that? Amen. We don't have women dressing sexy in here. We have church mothers and folks that will come up to them and, and assist them. 
rebuke. When you'll be exhorted too. But we want you to look nice. We, we don't want to lower the standard of that. Once you lower the standard, in a year's time, it's the club. Amen. Yeah, teen dating the same way. Do I have to mention that every Sunday? We don't do no teen dating in here. And the developmental years of teenagers are not for dating. It's for developing. So we're guardians. So we're going to guard our children during those years. Then when they come of age and are ready for that, then, you know, you handle that the way you handle your house. But up to then, we've all, it's a general consensus in here. We got men in here with daughters, but we're not coupling up here. We're not going to have a youth department like that. I've seen those. We're not doing that here. Amen. So if you don't agree with this, your kid will not be in our youth group. Now, I'm not going to put you out. I've never put anybody out of this church. Contrary to my reputation. <laughs> Man, I've never put anybody out of ABC. It's hard to believe in it after all the stuff you heard, right? I've never put anybody out. Everybody leaves ABC, leaves on their own. That's, that door swings both directions. They leave on their own. Now, some brothers I have asked to take a sabbatical from the church to just improve themselves mentally. They took it. And they're here. And they came back. Hey, thank God for that. Because I was wilding in my mind. Yes. So they needed a little help. We've done that. But we didn't excommunicate and make them non-members. Never done that before. No. I'm just going to let the situation resolve itself. So don't you go lie and say somebody put you out. That's a lie. Never done that. Let it resolve. But you have to think in terms of what we're doing here as our standard. I have videos about teen dating. Psychiatrists will tell you that not to do that. That's detrimental to the development of your child. So that's our standard. Jay Bryan got up and preached it. He's holding the line. And I'm reiterating it. I'm with him. We're backing him because that's what we're going to do here. Amen. If you change your mind and feel like you need to do something else, you're welcome to somewhere else but in here no and if you're a leader in here and you change your mind and decide to do that you won't be leading in here we're not going to let you lead if you aren't following our standard the standards must be upheld without compromise or else the whole body could be affected Matthew 5 and 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall what? Obtain mercy. And because I want the mercy of the Lord, I'm going to have mercy on people. However, I'm going to hold the standard. Look at somebody say, hold the line. And you have to help us hold it too. Second Timothy 4 and 3, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they do what? Heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Lord have mercy. The Bible clearly states that the time will come when people will no longer want sound doctrine. Those that were once standing strong on biblical principles will reject God's standard for the sake of their own secular progress. I call that selling out. When you compromise your own standards for the sake of secular progress, you're a sellout. Matthew 10 and 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my father, which is heaven. You don't stand up for Christ and for your morals. He's not going to stand up for you. You can't get to God unless Christ stands up for you. Amen. The best example is when Stephen opened a portal into the other dimension and saw Jesus doing what? Standing for him. Because he stood up and didn't sell out. Stephen was very young. Very young. 
teenager. He could have easily just said, you know, I might as well just go along with what they're doing so I can get higher up in the government. And then I can make the necessary changes. Nope, he said, I'd rather die. And Jesus stood up for him. All of a sudden, they will reject the truth. Just all of a sudden. You know somebody that that happened to? All of a sudden, you called him. Hey, man, what's going on? Man, I saw this video. Man, the earth. It's flat. It's just flat. So I'm trying to figure out how am I going to stay at this church where they're preaching that it's round. It's just flat. So brother, you going to leave about something that can't nobody check and see? Like, dude, like, can we just disagree? Neither. Until we save up enough money to get on SpaceX with Elon Musk and we can all see But all of a sudden, they reject the truth. Furthermore, they will demonize true churches and true teachers. Don't they do that? They will try to find error in everything that contradicts their personal goals and gain. You have to find error because you're wrong if you don't find wrong. See, that's how you prove that you were right, by finding wrong. Jude 11, woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. What way was that? Cain murdered his brother that way. These folks have become murderers of other people to defend their decision. Then they ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward. What did Balaam do? Compromise. Sold his people out. And perished in the gang saying of Kor. This is the good one. Perished. This, what is this? This is their fate. Those that do this kind of stuff, they're going to end up like Korah. What happened to Korah? The ground opened up. And they all went to hell. God has a very special place for the sellouts. Because he takes it very personal. You don't sell out the death, burial, and resurrection of my son. So you may not care much about your son. But I know if you go to messing with Landon or Jonathan, a whole different person rises up. That's something else start just happening. I can't even explain it. I know how I feel about them. I jump in front of any bullet, any knife, any assailant to save my sons. And they know that. Something just, oh. And then when you try to do them wrong to get back at me. Thank God I'm saved. But that's how God takes it. So really you're going to do this to my son? To those that are preaching because of what my son did. <laughs> These people will search for and find teachers that will affirm and what? Agree with their own situations. Only to find themselves an enemy of the truth they once believed. Isn't that something? You searched and searched to find somebody to agree with your state and now you're an enemy of the state you used to be in. Think about that for a second. Yeah. Go to the potter's house. You'll see a lesbian couple, a gay couple, a couple of gays. You'll see. And then some more. You just have to stop looking to stop seeing them. You go to Joel Osteen, you'll see a lesbian couple just catching hands and 
doing all the motions, lifting their hand, just welcomed, completely welcomed. Y'all, I'm not exaggerating. This is true. They had to find a place where they could feel comfortable. But the problem is that the person that is preaching without the power of God doesn't say anything to make them want to change. You may slip in here, but you won't be holding hands long because the power of the Holy Ghost is going to address your condition. Just like he addresses all conditions. We ain't singling out gay and lesbian. Everything, fornication, adultery, everything is addressed in here. We're preaching against sin, period. And trying to live the life, life that Jesus wants us to live so we can see him when he returns. We're preaching against all sin. If you get uncomfortable, good. You should think about this church when you go out and sin. Oh man, I'm about to go in there Sunday. <laughs> yeah. These people will search for and find teachers that will affirm and agree with their own situation. Only to find themselves an enemy of the truth they once believed. They destroy the confidence that people once had in them because of this wavering state. A person that wavers, you destroy the confidence people have in you. After all, if you demonize the faith you once had, how can you be sure your new faith is correct? Jude 13, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame. You know what a raging wave is? You know, we look at it and think it's beautiful, but in the Bible days, this was a horrible analogy. It meant unpredictability. We don't know the conditions because the waves are raging. It's an unsafe. Foaming out of their own shame. Wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. This is more metaphorically here. A wandering star would be like a comet or a uh, asteroid or a meteor. Just flying by and then it's gone. Where'd it go to? The blackness of darkness. That's unstable people. You see them, the light, for one minute and then, whew. 2 Timothy 4 and 4, and they shall turn away their ears from what? The truth, and shall be turned unto faith. Do y'all believe the truth is being preached here? How many of you believe that the truth is being preached here? How many of you do not believe that the truth is being preached here and you really don't know why you're here? You believe that the truth, and not just this week, you believe that there is a pattern of the truth being preached here. Right? That's why you trust your family here. You bring your whole family. You bring your whole family because you believe it's the truth, right? Yeah, I believe it's the truth. I want my family exposed to the truth. But the Bible says these shall turn away in this hour their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Oh, Lord. This is the biggest fable. That's a fable. It's a fable. The church is social distancing with masks. And the football game believes that COVID doesn't like sports. It's a fable. It's a fable. That's why we don't do that in here. Why would we social distance in here? We ain't looking like that. That looks ridiculous. Ridiculous. What, are you, what page is the Bible on? I wish I could see. What are you reading in there? What page is it on? Can't, they can't have faith. None of that on the page. What page is that? I 
I mean, they are, they are afraid of catching something while worshiping God. And the three Hebrew boys was in a furnace in the fire. Not only. The, it wasn't just the threat of the fire, Amy. They were in the fire. And ask for no gas mask and flame suits. The truth of the gospel is protection against the lies of the world. Amen. Y'all believe that? When we do not know the truth or no longer stand in truth, we become what? Easy targets for strong delusion. Second. Thessalonians 2 and 12 that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness what is wrong with y'all why would it sound like a preacher cuss they just start laughing and giggling I know Jonathan loves that daddy calls <laughs> they ask me questions just to hear me say stuff see they they Something wrong with my kids. <laughs> that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. <laughs> what? I just had to make sure y'all was up. <laughs> but had pleasure in what? <laughs> pleasure in unrighteousness. <laughs> Amen. The word will preach. <laughs> Fables told in several churches today have caused many to fold and give in to the New World Order agenda. Amen. Fable. Fable. God is using the vaccine. Fable. Whoever preached that is lying. They're scared. Pray for them. God has never, never used pharmacia. Jesus could have easily went to the alchemist and got a potion. But instead, he reached into the ground and got what he made and said, what I made will repair what I made. That's why the devil is demonizing all holistic forms of, 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 of health care and all of that. Demonizing it all. Why? Because that's God's stuff. God made those plants. God made those trees. God made that ground. And he gave us an example by reaching in it and healing a man's blind eyes. He didn't go to the sorcerer. He didn't go to the pharmacist. And what he does doesn't have side effects. There are no side effects. So if you pushing the vaccine as a preacher, you a liar. You need to get saved before it's too late. Because so many churches only taught emotion. Yeah, they buck and shout. That'll make you feel better. They did not build on the word of God. They have no faith to stand it on in these all that bucking and shouting, where is it now? Now they bucking and shouting with mask on. Bro, you're going to pass out. You can't breathe. You run around church with a mask on. I'm not happy if I'm wearing a mask. Ever. Ever. Whenever I got one on, I'm not happy. Somebody's going to be up dancing. I'd be frowning. Take the mask off. <laughs> What's wrong with him? He's mad. He, got that word. he has to wear a mask. Nobody happy wearing a mask. The church ought to be the place I can go and not have to wear it. The people that love me ought to love me enough to tolerate my breath, my droplets, and all my sweat. If you love me. Because so many churches only taught emotions and did not build on the word of God. They have no faith to stand on in these times. 1 Timothy 3 and 15. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou art to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God. 
It's about behavior in the house. Y'all, come on now. Is this the house of God? What makes it the house of God? The spirit of God is here. Why is the spirit of God here? Because what? Because we're here. The spirit of God is in all of us in here. So this is his house. So we're going to reverence his house and we're going to believe that his power resides in his house where two or three are gathered. He said he would be in the midst. If he's in the midst, can sickness get us? Can sickness kill us? Can anything harm us if God is in the midst? We're going to let the football audience have more faith than the church? They out there three hours, crammed, no mask, no social distancing, eating bad. But with all confidence in their team. You don't have confidence in your team? Isn't this your team right here? Isn't this your team? Isn't this the team you signed up to be a part of? The adamant believers, the end time believers, the ones that believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's the team I'm on. So if I'm going to watch a football team, I'm definitely going to support the home team. I don't understand. Woo. Oh, yeah, I just, just found the worst one I could find. Prosperity, entertainment, and female control. Y'all okay if I say that? Because that's what done kill, the, kill these churches. Female control have cost many churches its place in standing against the enemy's end time plans. There's nothing wrong with women in certain positions of leadership in the church. We have women that are over things here. Scared to amen. Really? <laughs> Wait, I bet we're listening to the rumors. We do. We really do. I mean, I don't have a problem with that. But I understand how a female is constructed by God. And a female is constructed by God emotionally. So the last place she needs to be is pastor in the church. And taking that kind of authority over a man. Paul said, don't do it. I'm trusting Paul. If I'm going to believe everything else Paul said, I have to believe that too. I suffer not a woman to teach nor usurp authority over a man. Yeah, so that's that, that part. I can't get with you. I can't get with you. I'm not putting no collars on no women in here. We're just not going to do that. We don't have collars on men in here. I'm not putting a collar on anybody. But yeah, but we're not doing that. That's not... And women, a real woman should, man, why you want to be bossing some men around telling them what to do all the time? Hey, man, that's a personal problem. <laughs> but that's what they've done to the American church. They did it on purpose so that they could, man, when the, when the devil wanted to deceive mankind in the garden, who'd he go to? The woman. When he wanted to get... Uh, let me, I, I can just go down the line when he wanted to get a uh, Samson he didn't use no old crusty Philistine did he <laughs> he used Delilah <laughs> yeah yeah and when he wanted to get the greatest prop, one of the greatest prophets in the Bible Elijah who did he use Jezebel yeah he's gonna go to the woman because he can manipulate the emotions of women. When he wanted to change mankind's DNA, who did they come get? The women. Genesis 6. The Bible said that the sons of God saw that the women were fair. Came down unto the women. Because of the emotional, and it works great for everything that it's supposed to work for. Amen. I don't want no wife tussling and rustling with me. I want it to work. Harmony. I, I, I need, amen. I need a feeling. I need, I need her feelings. Her feelings help govern our house. She knows what we're thinking. It works great there. 
It's not going to work great over a church. That's the standard here. Now, you can find anything you want on the internet. But the standard at ABC, this is what we believe. Am I right? Amen. This isn't new news. Without being rooted and grounded in the truth and the word, they are no match for what the elite have planned in this hour. The elite need to shut down the churches. He's shutting down the churches that are under female control. Margaret Sanger and Madame Blavatsky. Yeah. First Timothy 4 and 1. Now that the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall do what? Depart from the faith, giving heed to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Summary! I just had to preach the standard here. I might not even upload this online. Yes, I will. But this is just, our, this is just who we are, y'all, as a church. We're not backing off of it. Man, why would we wait 10 years to start changing how we do things here? Amen. 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 We ain't never had a problem with teen dating in the youth group. Why would we start tolerating problems now? We're going to shut it down. We never had problems with kids being uncomfortable, getting hollered on and sexually active and all that. We're not going to do that. So we're going to shut it down. Yeah. Yeah. Want these single women to be safe when they come here. Want them getting hollered at, hey girl, what you doing next week? Man, I came to church to serve the Lord. Are you hollering and thumping my hair and stuff? What's wrong with you? This is a church. It's not Mac City. Better go to Bucky's. Quit trip somewhere and holler at somebody. We're not doing that here in the church. I'm serious. I'm serious. We want, we want, uh, amen. I know we've grown, but we ain't that big. There's a lot of men in here. And we watching. Preachers must keep preaching the faith that saved them without wavering for internet views and likes. Amen. 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 We must never be the standard of the word for our own benefit. A true man of God weathers the storms to keep the gospel he is preaching pure and unchanged with all what? Consistency. So that his message will not weaken in this hour. Today, the preaching of the word is crucial because of all the lies being told. Fact checkers are falsely flagging and removing truth to forward the narrative of the enemy. Preachers are being attacked when they stand against anything that the new world order is doing. We must hold our ground and stand strong in this hour. We must plan ourselves and be unmovable and unshakable like the song says some will not be able to endure sound doctrine and will retreat can i say that again some are going to retreat you got to get over them quick you got to get over them quick you know why because when people retreat they need company they need company Look at somebody say, you better grow up. up. This is the end times. So many will not be able to endure and they will retreat. But those of us that are committed to God's truth must remain steadfast and what? Immovable. We are the last. Listen to this. Listen. Y'all listening? We are the last generation. To display the true power of God. This is it. There's nothing on the other side of COVID-19 and the pandemic. You know that, right? 
This is it. So we are the last generation to display the true power of God. So we must continue to stand. We must be watchful for the grievous wolves that come to scatter us and dislodge us from our stance. We must be prayerful against those that arise in our midst to cause sedition and discord among you, among us. In order to truly stand, we must know the word, preach the word, and live the word in these end times. Amen. End time ethics. This is the amplified version of the same passages we read. Second Timothy 4 and 2. Herald and preach the word. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by and be at hand and ready. Whether the opportunity seems to be favorable or what? Unfavorable. Whether it is convenient or inconvenient whether it is welcomed or unwelcome you as preacher of you as a preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong and convince them rebuking and correcting warning and urging and encouraging them being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and teaching for the time is coming when people will not tolerate or endure sound or wholesome instruction. That's what doctrine is. Instruction. They don't like your instructions no more. But having itching ears for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather to themselves one teacher after another to, cons to a considerable number, chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors they hold. And will turn aside from hearing the truth and wander off into myths and man-made fictions. As for you, be calm and cool and steady. Oh my goodness. Except, because they're going to hurt you. They're going to hurt you. But accept and suffer unflinchingly every hardship do the work of an evangelist fully perform all the duties of your ministry everyone stand some of y'all you know read this and but that's to preachers well it's to me and so can I preach to myself this is where we all have to be though in the end times unmovable unshakable unbreakable standing unflinchingly to face the hardships that the world is placing on us as believers anyone just need more of this more just want your stand to be stronger and I'm standing up here and I need God to help me because folks will be folks and they will try to hurt us but we want to stand in this last hour no matter what is happening. I love it. These men want to come stand for their families, their homes. It's the end times. What are we doing? We have a standard here at ABC. And if there's 20 people here, there'll be 20 people here. We've never desired a large sanctuary. I just want the truth preached and the standard upheld in this end time i feel like that's my job and I, when you come here i feel like you signed up for it you signed up to fight with me you signed up to fight for me you signed up to fight for this fellowship you signed up to fight for the kingdom of god and you signed up to stand in this last hour so don't let nobody dislodge you don't let nobody pull you out don't let nobody chatter in your ear to make you doubt. We're going to stand in this last hour. Amen. Anyone else? And I'm going to pray. We're going to pray that the power of God keeps us strong. Keeps us standing. And we're going to see Jesus. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. With your hands lifted up, Father God, all over this building, we come as your believers, adamant believers, believing in your power, your strength. Father God, believing in you in this last hour. Lord, in this last hour sometimes seems so dark and cold and lonely. Father God, sometimes it seems like no one is standing with us. Sometimes it seems like we're all alone. And Father God, as we struggle even in our minds and our hearts, sometimes it just gets rough. It gets tough. I know it gets tough for me a lot of times, Lord. I just feel like I'm on a planet by myself sometimes. And you just, you just grow weary sometimes. And, but Father God, we're going to trust you and believe that as long as your power is here, Father God, there's hope for all of us. No matter what we've been through, no matter what has happened, Father God, no matter what was done to us, no matter what we've done, God, you are here to be with us in this hour. So I pray, Father God, right now, with the power you've given me, even as the head or leader of this ministry and this fellowship and these 700, or 600, 700 people, Father God, I just thank you, Lord. And I pray for each and every one of them, God, that their minds will stay strong in this hour. Lord God, that they will not waver, that they will not buy into lies. Father God, that they will not be fearful, that the enemy will not speak to them, convince them, and then deceive them. Father God, that they will not let go of the standard that they're upholding. Father God, that they will not let go and back off the stance that they have. But Father, that we would all, as Adam and believers, and beyond, stand strong for you in this last hour. For no other reason, not for show, not to please people. Father God, not to be seen or known, not for likes or views. For no other reason other than to stay true to you, God, in this last hour. I pray for every man that has come in his home. Pray for every woman in her home. Father God, I pray for everyone that is here and I speak, Father God, peace, God's peace in their homes as they stand strong. And God, any enemy, any witchcraft, any spirit, any foul aggressor, anything, God, that is coming after them, God, we cancel it right now with your power, God. With your authority, we speak against every enemy of this church, every enemy of your truth every enemy of our stance and our standard god we will hold your ethics at abc we'll hold your ethics when we leave this church and go home we'll hold your ethics god on our job we'll continue to hold the line and stand strong for you in this last and evil day and no matter what thoughts may creep into our mind we're not gonna bend no matter what thoughts may come, no matter what people may say, we will not fold. We will stand, therefore, in the name that is above every name. For our family, for our children, for our husbands, our wives, Father God, for our, our employers on the job. For everyone to see us standing in this last hour. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we will stand thank you lord thank you lord amen hallelujah hallelujah come on hug somebody and tell them i'm gonna stand no matter what they're saying no matter what they're doing i'm gonna stand hallelujah 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 come on love on them and tell them I'm gonna stand I'm gonna stand I'm gonna hold the line I'm gonna hold up the standard I'm not backing down I'm in the world but I'm not of this world so I'm gonna continue to stand for God in this hour hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Come on, Elder. 